If there is one politician I really admire in this country, and I've stated it here severally, then that politician is none other than Moses Korea. You can take away anything and everything from Moses Korea, but one thing you can't take away from him is his understanding of politics. I followed Moses Korea when he was being elected the first time after the two, 2013 election, in a by-election. And that's when I realized that Moses Korea is a good politician. He might have his flaws. I know most of you people will tell me about Msando, you know, about all those other bad things he used to say. That's politics. But there's one thing you can't take from him. Moses Korea has been in a hospital since September last year. But Moses Korea is still the headline in this country. As a matter of fact, Moses Korea will hold a homecoming on Saturday. And almost all key political players in this country wants to be part of that homecoming. And I'll be keenly following that homecoming because I expect Moses Korea to issue a directive. So sometimes back, the deputy president, Dr. William Samaya Arapruto, was in Dubai accompanied by Oscar Sudi. And later on, they shared a photo with Moses Korea. And after that, it was expected that Moses Korea was now going to endorse or to work with the deputy president, Dr. William Samaya Arapruto. And yesterday, or was it the day after, yes, before yesterday, Moses Korea's photos started circulating online with the several key players within Azimio. Richard, Richard Ngatia, Raila Jr., Mutai Kagwe, Peter Munya, and many others. And most people thought that Moses Korea had actually joined Azimio. And on, in one of my videos, the moment I saw the photo of Raila Jr., and Moses Korea, and later on that photo of Raila Jr. and Raila Odinga in Dubai, I opined on this platform that Moses Korea was going to meet President Ru Kenyatta and Raila Amolodinga. I can tell you that Moses Korea met with President Ru Kenyatta and Raila Amolodinga. In his interview yesterday with Jeff Koinange, Moses Korea alluded to the fact that he had talks with President Ru Kenyatta, but at the sidelines of that meeting. I don't want to get into that meeting. What I want to focus on is how Moses Korea has disappointed the deputy president, Dr. William Samoy Arapruton. And for you to understand that, let me just read for you a post by Silvanus Osoro. Silvanus Osoro is one of the key allies of the deputy president, Dr. William Samoy Arapruton. Yesterday, he was in, uh, he accompanied the DP to some function in the larger Mount Kenya region. And this is what Osoro posted. My very good, my very close friend, Moses Korea, you know me very well. I do not do guesswork. Whatever I said in Moranga today is factual. I will substantiate my sentiments after Saturday. Karibu Kenya, bro. Turudi kwa projects. So basically, Osoro had accused Moses Korea of being bought by President Ru Kenyatta and Raila Odinga while in Dubai. That clearly tells you that there's a disappointment. There is no way Silvanus Osoro could have uh, said the things he said in front of the deputy president if the deputy president had reached an agreement with Moses Korea while he was in Dubai. Which takes us to the main question. How how is that disappointment expressed? Before we get into all those details, if you're watching this channel for the first time, I want you to take a second or two, click the subscribe button, so that next time we produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. And to the subscribers, I want to continue. Thank you guys for your continued support. Without that support, this channel cannot be where it is. Now let us get back to the main issue. The truth of the matter is that Moses Korea is now one of the prized politicians in this country, probably followed by Kalonzo Musioka. And why is Moses Korea's price so high? One reason only. He's the member of parliament for Gatundu South. 
he represent president uhuru muge kenyatta in parliament so perceptionally any politician would be interested in having the member of parliament representing the president on his side if ruto for example were to win moses korea to his side he can brag that even the president member of parliament himself is not comfortable with being with the president although for me on this platform i've always maintained that moses korea is actually a trojan horse that's something which i'll stick with it i've stuck with it for the last two years i'll stick with it until the election time so moses korea has disappointed the deputy president why number one the deputy president is a very shrewd politician and one of the things the deputy president had actually intended to do was to water down president ruru kenyatta's intended tour of the larger mount kenya region president ruru kenyatta is supposed to start campaigning for raila Odinga in the larger mount kenya region next week moses kuria's homecoming is actually supposed to be this saturday so if moses kuria's event was were to go successfully and the deputy president were to be part of it if he was to be included because right now we don't know moses kuria is saying he has invited raila he has invited uhuru he has invited everybody if moses kuria's event were to be graced by tanga tanga and moses kuria were to make that announcement that is now part of tanga tanga that was going to take the limelight from president ruru kenyatta's intended tour of the larger mount kenya region it was going to be a big scoop for the dp so that's the first disappointed so the dp will now not have that opportunity and someone was telling me that kenyans should be alert because there's a chance that moses kuria will come from dubai accompanied with or by raila amolo dinga <laughs> And we don't rule out any possibility. He can come from Dubai, he, land in uh, K, K, JKIA, heads to Gatundu, inside a vehicle, and once he will uh, get off the rooftop, the guy who will be next to him will be Raila Odinga. The duty president will find himself in a very quiet situation if he would be, or if he was in the ground. Someone was also telling me that the allies of the DP had actually intended, if you look at their program, on Friday, they're supposed to be in Kiambu. Kiambu is the home county of Moses Korea. Then after Kiambu, they were supposed to go to Thika. The idea of going to Kiambu was actually to intimidate Moses Korea so that this event was going to be heavily mobilized. They were going to organize a very big event in Kiambu so that by the time Moses Korea will be landing, he will be following that Kiambu is going with the DP. So we'll have no option. Now, that limelight is now not going to be there. Number two. The deputy president is now keen on consolidating his support base of the larger Mount Kenya region. The mountain is slipping. Why is the mountain slipping from the hands of the DP? The mountain is slipping because the DP made a tactical, a tactical error or mistake. The mistake of uh, assuming that UDA was the party of choice and that Moses Korea, Mongi Kyunjuri and the group who were pushing for their own political parties were not important. So the effect is that the deputy president today is facing Moses Korea, is facing Mwangi Kujuri, and these guys are making serious inroads in their politics. Because in after 2022, the mountain might not have a serious candidate. But again, the deputy president entered into some coalition with Ford Kenya and ANC. So the question is, why Western and not Central? So the DP wanted to use this occasion to officially allow Moses Korea to, to enter into an alliance with the UDA party. And that was going to help him consolidate his support base. Without that, he will miss that opportunity. And that's why he is disappointed. Number three is the fact that Moses Korea is now a prized politician. You know, there's defection here, left, right, and center. Politics is taking shape. Ruto has already managed to outweigh Uhuru and Raila and won the support of Mudavadi and Weta. Now there's the talk of Kalonzo Musioka, another priced guy, and then Moses Korea. Moses Korea is being courted by Uhuru, is being courted by Raila. 
Moses Kuria at the same time is also being quoted by the deputy president. So the question is, where will Moses Kuria go? If the DP will succeed in convincing Moses Kuria to support him or to be on his side, then that will be a huge political blow to the president. A huge political blow to Raila Morodinga. President Ruth Kenyatta would rather have Moses Kuria running the way he's running, doing his things the way he's doing, but with, without joining the deputy president. And being a prized politician at the moment, if the DP were to win him, I mean, that would be huge. That would be huge. So that opportunity of winning Moses Korea is now going down. If you listen to Moses Korea's interview yesterday, he was very categorical that when he left, UDA, UDA as a political party never allowed any coalition. So he doesn't understand why Moses Korea, I mean, why Muslim Davadi and why Wetawa allowed and that Azimio was also formed when he was not there and therefore he can't, he's not part of it, he's just reading the rest from news. So that's number three. Number four is perception. Politics is a perception, it's a perceptional game. The truth of the matter is that William Ruto managed to win Mudavadi and it gave him the perception that he's winning. I want you to look at Ruto without Mudavadi. If he's going to win Moses Korea to his side, that was going to create the impression or the perception that the DP is actually now winning more supporters to his side. That opportunity is now gone. He will, he won't, the DP won't have that opportunity to create the perception that his party is winning hearts. And lastly, I can tell you for free that the main intention of the DP, why he went to Dubai, apart from ISO businesses in Guinea, which I did a comprehensive analysis on, is the fact that he wanted to stop Moses Korea from joining Azimio. That's one thing he wants to do. Stop Moses Korea from joining Azimio at all cost. If Moses Korea were to join Azimio, that would be bad politics for him. Will hurt William Ruto's bid for the presidency. That's my take. I don't know what you think. In my view, the DP is disappointed because, number one, he wanted to steal the limelight from President Ruru Kenyatta's next week's event. Number two, he wants to consolidate his support base in the larger Mount Kenya region. Number three, Moses Kure, as we speak now, is one of the prized politicians we have in the country. Number four, Moses Kuria, as we speak, is undecided. He might go to Azimio. So the DP wanted to stop him from any move of going to Azimio. And lastly, is the perception. I don't know what you think. Let me hear your thoughts on that. And I want to ask you guys a very simple question again. The deputy president has been in the larger Mount Kenya region. What is your opinion about his trip, his latest trips to the larger Mount Kenya region? Are they charged the way they used to be before? Or is there something which you can get? How many members of parliament are accompanying the DP? For sure, from my perspective, what I can tell you, and this is my thinking, the DP, the kind of support, emotional support the DP used to enjoy in the larger Mount Kenya region, in my view, is no longer there. Let's just face the reality. It's no longer there. If you look at the, the photos they are sharing from Kirinyaga, if you look at the videos and the people attending, there is something. The DP is losing grip of the larger Mount Kenya region or the way he used to mobilize before has changed. He's no longer mobilizing the way he used to be before. I'll do a critical analysis of William Ruto's trip to the mountain. Until that time, this is Lee McQueen. Bye-bye.